Welcome to Anza Borrego State Park in Southern California. This is Split Mountain Gorge, right along Fish Creek Wash. And this is just a geologic, just Mecca, this uh, amazing location with rocks of different types displayed in just, just grandeur and majesty, cool structures, just a total place to explore uh, great geology all around. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, here checking this place out for the first time. So thanks for joining me on this little venture. This has been on my radar for a long time. Just haven't had the chance to get down here till now. So we'll probably explore this wash, which has a lot of cool geology I've heard. And we might break this up into a couple different video segments. But let's start with uh, the rock types we see here. Um, these are all about 8 million year old. So they're Miocene age rocks. They are layered, as you can see. There are a lot of layers that have large particles in them, so boulders, angular boulders mixed in with uh, finer grain sediments. We'll go ahead and get up here close and take a look at it. Uh, and then I think we'll also want to look for some of the structures that are in here. We're pretty close to um, the San Jacinto and Elsinore faults, so we expect we might see some faults along the way. So you can see some of the big class here are of granite. These are undoubtedly derived from the peninsular ranges to the west, the uh, Southern California batholith, the granites that form the mountain ranges to the west. So these have been shed off in stream systems or alluvial fans. So we've got big boulders and more sandy horizons in here. Just beautiful exposure of these rock types here. If we back up, it's always a little better. If you back up, you can sometimes see some of the structures a little bit better. And the nice thing about layered rocks or bedded rocks is they help us be able to, they help us figure out where faults might be. So as we look at this, this contact here between the dark and lighter units above, as we come over to this fracture, Notice it moves up a little bit. So there's a little bit of offset here across this fault uh, that we see in the wall of the canyon. So that crack running up and down the wall of the cliff there is actually uh, a minor fault. And you can see a little bit of displacement there, maybe you know half a meter, a couple feet or so. Uh, if we move along, kind of following that same layer it looks to me like that again that the dark contact of that dark layer right here at this fracture it jumps up again to that one there so we're looking at a series of normal faults some uh, north dipping normal faults in the cliff face here a bit more of a sandy layer down low so we can see that the upper unit has a lot more of the boulders sticking out of it. And of course we can look at the size of those boulders to give us a sense of the energy. I mean, there's boulders up here that are probably at least a meter, three feet or so across in diameter, just really large. And so that takes quite a bit of energy through gravity and possibly stream systems to be able to trans transport something that big. And over here a little bit closer. And then we end up with this much more sandy unit, um, but it does contain some large particles in it. Not nearly as big as the ones we saw above, but you know, fist size, maybe baseball size particles. Uh, there's a nice sharp contact there with this red, looks like more of a mudstone, and then the sandstone just above it. Uh, and because that unit's softer, it's forming a bit of a, a recess. You can see this kind of small cave down here formed in this softer unit. Again, you have to alternate between kind of looking up close to identify rock types, but then also stepping back. So we could see that red unit down there. It's probably back in here, a little hard to see. But now as I move up into this section, I see the red unit a little bit higher and I see another crack or fracture. And so if we back up a little bit, we might be able to see 
I guess what I'm saying is I suspect it's another fault and if we back up far enough you should be able to see the offset a little bit further here moon walking across the wash yeah so you can see this brown layer here on the right um, where it intersects this fracture and then if you look for that same brown layer on the left side you'll see that it's up here so we've got offset across this fault of maybe maybe about 10 feet three meters or so um, so that's a nice large fault that's cutting uh, through the unit there uh, and then the red mudstone is on this side of the fault here but on this side it drops down and then we see it crop out over here so just you know things you can do to kind of pick out these structures uh, is really helpful so knowing that a lot of these large fractures that cut through the whole cliff the ones we've seen so far have been faults as we look back here and let me get a little closer because it's in the shade we've got a couple of fractures running through the cliff back in here so we suspect these could also be faults but let's get up close and see if we can pick those out a little bit okay so i'm going to focus on this one on the left because uh, this one's really awesome and pretty dramatic so if you can see up here on these faces you might see some lines running back and forth across the the surface of the rock there and those rocks are incredibly polished those are actually fault surfaces those are what we call slicken lines and because the lines go across the rocks here uh, left to right that indicates that the fault movement was horizontal or left to right let's see if we can get up a little bit closer scramble up this little slope and get a little better view of these uh, slick insides, these fault surfaces that indicate the movement. So the good ones are way up there um, in the lighter colored rock, and those are pretty inaccessible. Uh, even with my climbing skills, that looks pretty, pretty nasty to climb up. But uh, we can see some down here. So if we look down here at this surface, it's pretty polished, especially this little face here. You can see these lines running across this face. Here's another little section right here. So this is a fault surface that shows lateral movement or strike slip motion back and forth. And that's to be expected because we've got this zone in this region with the San Jacinto Fault and the Elsinore Fault, all secondary faults related to the San Andreas Fault, um, where we might expect to see lots of other strike slip faults. Uh, this crack here is another fault. You can see those slicken lines running across the rock here. So the gritty sandstone and conglomerate is actually pretty well polished here. The other thing you can see here, I hope you can see it, um, is, let me see if I can back up a little bit. Well, maybe not. There's not much to back up onto. But what I'm hoping you can see as well is this surface is somewhat corrugated. So there's a rise here and then it comes down and comes up and comes in and out. So it's actually a corrugated surface. Maybe you can see it better from the end on. Yeah, it comes up, goes down, comes up. And that's pretty typical of faults as well, is to have uh, that corrugated um, character in the fault plane itself. So pretty awesome, just beautiful uh, slicken lines. And then, so the slicken lines are the lines, and then the surface is sometimes called a uh, slicken side surface. Really cool. So let's head back down and then see, look back up at it from a distance. And you know, you might ask, well, how much, how much movement did that fault produce? Or maybe how big were the earthquakes that produced that fault? Um, in the world of faults, these, these ones we're looking at in the walls of the gorge here 
are fairly small. Um, I wouldn't say these are major faults that are producing, you know, magnitude six earthquakes. Probably much smaller than that. Um, but the secondary faults like these, these smaller ones that you can actually see and measure, a lot of times these are really valuable to quantify, figure out which direction it's going, how it's oriented, which way the lines go, because the smaller faults will oftentimes tell you some information about the bigger system and the bigger faults that are uh, in the area. So there's where we just were right up here, and we can see the slicken lines running across. There's actually sort of two surfaces there, down into the more reddish unit there. Pretty awesome. So right away, right off the bat, we've seen both normal and strike slip faults here. Let's go ahead and get back in the car, drive a little bit further up the wash, and we'll see what we see next.